Hello and welcome back to the Argonian Adventures. So, last time we took a little bit of land off of House Dress here, and in fact, they have a little bit of a problem, because if we go into this, you will see that um, they are not feeling well. They are near death due to a magical shock, which we may have been a part of, possibly. Couldn't possibly say. So they're not feeling very good. Uh, so that is good for us. But then when I went in here to have a look, they only have five living members. In fact, their dynasty only has 12 living members. We are very close to wiping them completely off the map, which is definitely good for us. Who's our successor, by the way? So it's this guy. What's their succession law then? Equal partition. So under equal partition, how is this the heir? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. How would you... that you're not the heir, right? Because under equal partition, that's the heir. So you're not under equal partition. Oh, right, there we go, I clicked into it, now it says Great House Selective. Now you see, that makes a lot more sense for it to be Great House Selective. Does it say it on here, or am I crazy? Yeah, equal partition, but that's quite clearly Great House Selective. Anyway, doesn't matter. So, they're under electives, so that's why it's not passing to her daughter, that's fine. It probably means that this one's going to be under equal partition. Yeah, I don't know why it's not showing the top level title. But anyway, that's fine. Like, when I hover over this, it should, in theory, show me the top level title, succession law, but anyway. Um, so they're going to inherit from there. So you're a member of House Dress as well, or Dynasty Dress. No, so you're a different dynasty. Interesting. Okay. Anyway. So... Uh, that's pretty good for us. Uh, that's probably going to be our main goal for now. In terms of our character's goals, it has been pointed out that our character has not really got any traits that scream a goal in mind, right? Like, we're not ve like when we went to this character, our grandfather, he was wrathful, impatient, arbitrary. We had the backstory the game had given us. This gave him a very strong purpose in life. For us, we don't have the same... Um, purpose which is interesting in terms of what we do next i think focusing on the feud is good because that's something that is known and we've established but beyond that it's not like we have a great desire to be in charge of our nation for instance we don't have a great desire to expand a lot of it's going to be like the gameplay versus rp thing we talked about at one point where we're going to have to do some things for gameplay because in theory, this series has a time limit on it, and the time limit is when CK3 updates to a new version, uh, which is in about 11 days. So, we need to think about that. But, for now, let's focus on dealing with house dress, and then we'll think about where things are going after that. Now, it has been suggested that we could hire an antiquarian, on a completely different note. Uh, and the reason why we might want to hire an antiquarian is that they could then commission, a, we could commission an artifact from them. I'm not entirely sure we need it. Also, I don't even have the prize brooch equipped that we got in the previous tournament, so we'll equip that. But it might allow us some extra stuff here. I think that if we really want stuff, uh, we have other ways to get it. In fact, can we steal stuff from you? I'm just curious, actually. No. Do I need to find somebody? I'm just checking whether I can find someone who has anything. So do you have stuff? You do. So no, I don't think we can steal stuff. Do we need to have a specific thing for that? Well, uh, it's probably somewhere in here. I always forget that. Also, Crime Boss is something I didn't know existed. Unlocks positive side effects that can occur if a county of yours has low control. Oh, interesting. Okay, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Anyway, we'll come back to that later. I think I'm, I'm kind of thinking I might unpause and just do Hist Communion. That might that might be fine. That might just move time along enough that we have something that obviously pops up as something to do. So, yeah, let's do that. I'm going to go to Bogmother, because it's the one that we go to, and it's very close. Uh, I don't need Mercenary Guards, and I don't need a Jungle Stalker to take me there. Uh, we'll go for a Blessing again. Let's go. Cool. We have arrived. The Hist welcomes us and we lose some uh, stress. And now, soft moss under the branches. I suddenly stumble upon a lovely spot near the Hist, a hidden grove of sun-warmed stones casting cool shadows where soft moss is growing. The tranquil murmur of the marshes fills the air, and the vibrant green hues of the moss invite weary travelers to rest. 
As I stand there contemplating, I wonder if it would be disrespectful to lay down for a while in such a sacred place. The hiss presence looms above, inviting to prayer, yet the allure of the soft moss and the peaceful surroundings tempt me to pause and rejuvenate from the exhausting day. So I can have a nap or intense prayer. Definitely intense prayer. That's what we're going for here. I just lost the domain limit? Why? What happened? Uh, nothing happened in here. We must just have lost a stat somewhere. What could have happened is that our, um, yeah, it could be like our husband lost a bit of entry, uh, not entry, a bit of stewardship or something. And then that knocked ours down. Uh, we can fix it after this. Uh, we have finished our communion. We didn't get to try the sap this time. So we didn't get to see whether we can uh, become a behemoth or anything. Okay, well, I guess we'll head back. Colourful mating dances. This is an Elder Scroll, or sorry, an Elder King's event. Traversing the treacherous swamps of Black Marsh, we all brace for the worst as we notice some strange lights not far from us shining through the trees. But as we carefully approach them, it soon becomes clear that there is no danger here, this time at least. Instead, we find a bunch of small creatures dancing through the air, displaying a range of beautiful colours and patterns. These small swamp jellies display some distant resemblance to the much larger niche with long tentacles under a gas-filled body. Seeing them move in some kind of complex mating dance leaves even the most battle-hardened individual of my group stunned by this display of unexpected beauty. So we can stay there and just lose some stress, or pretty but we have to go. Well, we're not really stressed, so we have to go, I think, on that one. We have now arrived back. Okay. Um, what's this? I'm invited, or I can join a grand tournament. Okay, if I leave now, which would be an archery tournament. I guess we can keep doing tournaments. Or I can go to a feast. Who's invited me? A fellow vassal has invited me to this feast. Well, we're not stressed, so I'm going to decline the feast invite. Uh, and then I think we'll go on this one. But let me just see for a second. Uh, we don't have a regent or anything. This is using our stuff. Uh, well, I think what we'll do is we will go in here. And we're going to change you from assist ruler, which gives us kind of some stats across the board. We're going to switch it to manage domain. And that now means that our stewardship has gone above 12. Which now means that we are, uh, you know, uh, allowed to hold that extra domain. So, cool. Right. Uh, we can also modify contracts. We just see here. Oh yeah, but there's not a lot we can modify here. I guess I could modify it so you pay me something. You know, that would be nice. I'm going to modify it so you pay me something. And I'm going to use my hook to make that happen. You have title revocation apparently right now, but that's fine. Yeah. I think in making it so that they actually have to pay us something seems pretty good for my vassal. Gives us some actual value from them. You, you give us fame. It could switch you to opinion. Although apparently I'm not allowed... Oh, if I use a hook? No. It just says I'm not allowed to do... I cannot demand more than one tyrannical change, but I didn't. I guess moving it at all is a tyrannical change? Yeah, look at that. It still says it's an act of tyranny. Huh. Okay, so moving it from this to anything else is a tyrannical change. I understand. Uh, in which case, there's nothing I want here, right? I mean, I could get it so that I can get some prestige and monthly prestige. And it makes them dislike me slightly. Yeah, let's do that then. I can't use my hook. Uh, oh, wait. You cannot use a hook on a contract already in favor of the vassal. But this isn't in favor of the vassal. The vassal takes a negative and I get a positive. So how is this in favor of the vassal? So if I do this and then hook, then it would let me do it. This must act, count as three tyrannical changes or something. Yeah, it looks like changing the vassal contribution basis from anything is a tyrannical change. Like changing it to none is a tyrannical is one tyrannical change. So I do this, right? So fame. So uh, take away the hook. So can't do this because it's tyrannical change. It, so actually, no, changing it to none is two tyrannical change. Because it says you can't do more than one, right? So, can't do more than one. 
so that has to be a number higher than one. Minor trib tributes, it comes in here. That then says you can do it, but it's there's still tyranny. That means that the value has to be one. And then if I use the hook, it goes away, confirming that. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know why it's like this. This is so weird. Yeah, I think it's meant to be if you're going that direction. I think it's the wrong way around. Also, I think that's only meant to be one tyrannical change. Anyway, uh, we're not going to do that. Well, actually, yeah, I might as well do this anyway, because we can. So, there we go. That's fine. So we get minor tributes enforced, which gives us more prestige per month. Cool. Uh, I can negotiate with my alliance. Uh, an alliance with you. Okay. It's my uncle-in-law. Uh, which I'm fairly certain is not related to us, but there we go. Let's get an alliance. That sounds good to me. Grand tournament. I just noticed who invite who's invite who's uh, grand tournament it is. It's some mountain orcs uh, grand tournament. Sure, I'll go to the mountain orcs archery grand tournament. That sounds like a good idea. Hmm. Um, that's only a ninety-four percent chance of danger. Jungle stalker does lower that a lot. Don't mercenary guards. Uh, it does lower them from dangerous to minorly dangerous. Yeah, let's do that. Or, yeah, medium danger. Yeah. Uh, is there anywhere I want to go afterwards? Could go back via Bailiff's Crossing. Uh, who holds that now? Oh, right, it's these guys. Now, uh, you know what? I don't need to visit their lands. That's fine. Let's start a principle. Oh, there are two grand tournaments, but I won't arrive to this one in time. What is up with your eyes? Ghost scale. Caressa embodies the essence of a ghost moving unseen and inspiring fear in those who sense her presence. Oh, somebody told me there was a Lich um, Argonian around. I guess this is the Lich Argonian. Yeah, okay. I think they said if they lost their title at any point, there would be a good um, like uh, mage to bring into your court and they could teach children very well. Okay, interesting. Uh, do you hold that land down there. Alright. Interesting. Also, wait a second. Has this gone off the screen? Does that usually happen? I'm now going crazy. Oh, yes, it does kind of go off the screen, off there a little bit. Anyway. Oh, no, it's, it's, it is further out on this one. Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at this. So, this is pushed slightly out, but theirs is definitely being pushed more. I don't know why that is. Anyway, it might be because these numbers are larger, potentially pushing it further. Or some, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so this is the uh, this is the lich. But when does her tournament start? Her tournament starts in. Is the first of the twelfth. We would arrive on the thirtieth of the first. So if I hire mercenary guards, yeah, there's no way that's happening. Yeah, that's just not going to happen unless... Wait a second, what if I manually make my route? Higher... I don't need to do that right now. So let's manually make my route. So I'm going to go here. Oh, I can't choose to take the major river. Oh, yeah, see, that's my problem. If I could choose to take the major river, that would then allow us to uh, get there a lot quicker. What if I say I'm going here first? Then here. Does that get us there any quicker? So that gets us there on the sick. No, that's slower. Okay. Especially because it's taking us to the sea, this route. Yeah, I don't know why we can't use major rivers. Anyway. It's fine. Whatever. Uh, we can't reach that tournament. We can reach uh, Chieftain Borab's tournament, though. So let's go to that. Right, no problem. So we'll go Mercenary Guards. We'll then go Jungle Stalker. Let's go. All seems good to me. Yeah. Right. We have a mercenary captain here. Okay. We have our jungle stalker here. And uh, I just want to also check my children. Children's eight. Okay. Our first child is eight. I just want to know how old they were. Oh, I have it on the side as well. Okay. Past me was very organized. Right. Straight up here. No events. We've arrived. 
let's go to the tourney grounds because we need to qualify. My champions stand assembled for the day's training, their attendants laden with kit. Melanie and I and myself stand before all. Champions, what you do not know, humbly, uh, ask humbly to be taught, urges Melanie. Together we represent the Raj Nasa. Let us together prepare for our glories. She turns to me, eyes gleaming. Com command us. So, because I'm honest, we would gain a little stress for doing this one. I was to say, grab your swords. Champions, prove your keenness both of eye and mind, or best them all. I think I'm going to go with this one. Champions, prove your keenness both of eye and mind. Obviously, this one is against our uh, character's uh, nature because we're honest. So, increases scores, gets us a little bit in bow and wit, gets our champions a little bit in bow and wit, and gives all of our champions Hasslider. So, let's do that. Hey, that was enough to qualify. Perfect. When does this open? 20 days, and the archery begins in 18 days. Okay, I can add those together. Right, time to show the world my skill. And my champion is also qualified. The crowd murmurs placidly as Yag takes her mark. I fancy I catch a few words on the wind, and clearly so does Yag. She turns somewhat petulantly and dresses the crowd. Silence! Have some damn respect for the competitors! She grumbles cantankerously. A few titters come in response. Clearly, she needs pre uh, peace and tranquility with which to shoot an arrow, but I think, as she turns to brandish a fist towards the crowd once more, this might be taking it a bit far. So we can cheat or not cheat. cheat. I'm going to not cheat because that's against what we would normally do. So we'll let her get on with it. Aerodynamics. The banners flutter and roil around as I step up to take my shot, battered by the wind. Dust swirls past me as I knock an arrow, an arrow to the bow, the sour wind making my eyes water. I wait for it to subside. I continue waiting. I don't think it's going to stop. So I can say, oh, it wasn't my turn yet, and uh, cheat. Or maybe if I shoot across the wind, a 0% chance this works. It's just like, it's just never going to happen. Hmm. Well, we don't cheat, so but we'll take it. Dusk begins to draw in slowly but steadily as the competition continues. The snapping of strings in a staccato rhythm. I lean on my bow considering the path this contest has taken so far, such as when the wind began to blow strongly, forcing me to improvise. The competition begins to draw to a close as arrows continue to fly into and past the butts. If I'm to make any impact on proceeds from here, I must act now. So yeah, this is the one that happens every time. We've done a few of these now, so basically you choose whichever one you think is going to have the best outcome. So this is a 71% chance of neutral or good. That's 33% chance of good, 52% overall. Uh, that is very low, and that is lower than this one. So the question is, do we want a 52% chance with a 33 good, so 1 in 3 is good here, or do we want this one which has a very low chance of good but a lot of chance of neutral? I think it needs to be good, so let's go. I step forward, knock, aim, draw and loose. The arrow whistles through the air, thudding deep into the target. The crowd erupts, there can be no argument, this is a huge point in my favour. I'm winning, victory is so close, only a few more arrows remaining for each competitor, the end is at hand. That's not what this one says, this says my score greatly decreases. I won! Okay, I don't really understand how we won, but we won! Good. Okay. Um, my champion has not managed to place in the top three. Oh, third place came Yag, the person who we uh, didn't cheat with. Okay. We didn't, um, yeah, cheat with is the wrong word. Uh, the person who we didn't uh, cheat while they were shooting. Sabotage, maybe, is a better word for that. Anyway, we gain prestige, we gain money. We also get merry aim for five years, which gives us a bunch of bonuses. And we will receive a prize if one else gets a very small amount. And that's fine. Right, let's go. Conclusio. 
I have won the prize bow, which doesn't even give any prowess unlike a normal weapon. It gives you 2% enemy fatal casualties and one advantage in mountains exclusively. Wow, that's just terrible. Okay, but we get a bow experience, which is pretty good. And we get some legitimacy. So, we'll take what we can get. Uh, out of curiosity, Liege, do you have a weapon? No. Okay, well immediately, um, I'm just going to grant you that. Well, let me double check. Uh, that's the wrong one. Yeah, so the, this is better. It gives us prowess and night effectiveness. So immediately I'm just going to grant that to our liege because there's no reason for us to have it. We might as well give it to someone who can use it. Given that it gives you advantage and enemy fatal casualties, it has to be somebody who could lead an army. And I think our liege could lead an army. So let's give him a bow. It also makes him like us a little bit, which is nice. Right. And now we're heading back. What have we got here? Nothing we need to worry about. Okay. The story is in the telling. The Ashlander story tellers of Ald Lambassi are greatly renowned and when I finally meet them they don't disappoint. We spend many hours sitting around the fire listening to their stories and it's a true joy to hear them speak. So we can lower the cost of establishing the storytellers tradition in our culture. Or if you like stories you would like this one. I'm going to tell the story because we don't really, we're not, we're not going to do that uh, culture thing. Can I, uh, who's in charge of our culture? I assume not us, right? Yeah, it's our, it's our liege in charge of the culture, so making it cheaper by a thousand wouldn't do anything at all. So we might as well take the one diplomacy and some vassal opinion. Wonderful, we get to come back, that gives us some horse experience as well. Awesome. Right, and we have won yet another tournament. Great news. Okay. Well, uh, let some pause, let some time actually pass. Just something we haven't done a lot of yet. A lopsided resentment. Oh, no, 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 no. The feud shall continue. Yes, we will not be uh, getting rid of the feud. Also, when can I murder you? I can murder you in five years. Okay, cool. Well, let's chill then. It's not a lot that we need to do. We can just let time uh, progress. Um, so I have a thing where I'm not going to read the poetry. There are a lot of poetry events. We just don't read that. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to say, thanks, I'll uh, keep that poem safe for you. And then I'm going to equip it. So, short range duration is down 8%, and we get uh, even more tiny amounts of prestige. So, cool. I don't think we even have a short range penalty anymore, right? Uh, no, in fact, we have a long range bonus that's about to hit its maximum. Yeah, it's about to hit the maximum of 15. So, cool. Wonderful. Uh, what's this? Oh, two things I've been invited to. I've been invited to NASA Casa's uh, to NASA Casa's hunt here. Okay, which I may not arrive to in time. And I've been invited to Carl Vitra Larasha's grand wedding. Well, apparently we're going to arrive on time to this one, and it's my cousin and friend. I'm going to go to my cousin's wedding. Sure, let's do that. Right. Um, I don't need mercenary guards. I also don't need a jungle stalker. Uh, maybe I need a jungle... Well, that's only medium danger. You know what? I think we're fine. I think we're absolutely fine. Let's go. We're off to our cousin's wedding. We're just full of activities. And lots of fun things to do. How's this looking, by the way? It's getting there. We're currently, uh, minus 76% taxes, which is not ideal. But we're, we're definitely getting there. Uh, you're still doing this, you're still doing that. Okay, all of this seems fine. Yeah, all of that seems fine to me. Nobody's needing to switch onto anything immediately, so... Cool. Right. We've arrived. He hasn't arrived yet, the bride hasn't arrived. Now he's arrived. I look around in excitement. Everywhere I lay my eyes, there are mingling guests, flowers on every surface, buzzing servants who have loaded dishes, and a very proud host, Calvitra Lurasha, checking on the final details. The nervous but excited spouses, Calvitra Lurasha and Lorpat Zit, are standing at ready. Uh, the ceremony is about to begin. Okay, cool. Oh, it looks like our liege is here as well, actually. Alright, we've got some diplomacy lifestyle experience for coming to this, but yeah. 
uh, King Medesi has, has arrived here. They've got the king here as well. I guess they're related, right? Because we're kind of related as well. So that makes sense, maybe. But uh, is that his father? No. Okay. Grandfather? No. Okay. Cool. I was also then thinking her grandfather? No. Okay. Anyway. The ceremony has finally reached its climax. The traditional rituals have been completed and all that's left are, are the final vows. The formal consent, the seal on the marriage, as both Kalvitra Lurasha and Nasa Lorpat Zid say, I do, the crowd starts cheering and we all stand witness to the beginning of their life together. The fact that she's Nasa, does that mean that she's uh, got land? No, she's unlanded. Okay, whatever. Um, exciting. Yes. And now, to the wedding banquet. Okay, so this is where we start getting events. Ooh, okay. Move this to the side. Uh, so, our aunt, and this is uh, the Chow, the Bran Shea sister of Bimja, they are the ones who killed Grand Magnate Ordris. How did they do it? They, they just murdered her. Okay. Which means that scales have now tipped in our favor on this. Okay, so she's dead. Cool. Um, so what does this mean? If we were to do this now, we would be a capable family. But no. The feud will continue. Okay. But uh, we now have a new person who's in charge of house dress. Who wasn't the person that said it was going to be in charge a second ago. We now have Relura the second. Who's actually a member of the dynasty of dress. Okay, rather than the dynasty of uh, Threthen. Who is our rival. Okay. So who's in charge of Threthen now? That would be Darva Threthen. Okay. Four living members. So these are the four here. Um, interesting. Primary heir just happens to be uh, this person who's lowborn. Wow. Okay. So we could get it so they have no land left if we kill this person first. Okay. Anyway, who else have we got here? So, chance of murder. 95%? Oh, well, I'll do that then. Predicted 22 agents are interested in this one. Okay, well, um, guess I'm going to kill you. Um, sorry about that, but 22 people want to kill you, so... Yeah, you're dead, I think. Yeah. Uh, we are at an effect of uh, like 400 almost um, success chance. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think I think that seems, sounds pretty good to me. Can't get away. I know I should be mingling with the other guests, but I just can't tear myself away from my friend, Cal Vitra Lurasha. I can see Nasa Lorpat Zid trying to get my, my attention, but every time I try to excuse myself, Vitra Lurasha has me howling with laughter all over again say, what a joy to have them here, and they become our best friend. Lorpad Zid can join us, and we can all be friends, which would be good, because that is his wife. Let's sneak out so we can talk properly, or you must excuse me, my friend. Why don't you come join us? Sure, there's a chance we become rivals, but let's see. We, beca we all became friends. Perfect. The next enemy, yeah, we'll be that person's rival. That sounds good. We're currently winning against them. Awesome. Food fit for a... By any reasonable standards, the evening's food is an excellent melody of textures, flavors, and spectacle. Though, this is a particularly special occasion. Near my seat, both Nasa, Melni, and King Madesi share their opinions about the spread. Another dish of the same, laughs, Mel laughs Melni. I know what I like, and I like what they're serving. The variety is a bit sparse, Madesi whines. What's the harm in having more variety of dishes? So, this event happens a lot in these ones, and basically you choose one and you get the experience that it offers. So I could side with Melni, and I get diplomacy experience. I can side with Medesi, he becomes my friend. Is he not already my friend? No, he's just my liege. Okay, he becomes my friend, I get martial experience, or not along without paying attention. I think I'm going to make King Medesi my friend. I think having the king as my friend sounds like a good thing. Okay. 
We could all tell Nasa Melanie had too much to drink, even though she insisted on showing us how sober she was. Simply rising from her seat proved too much for her, now I'm covered in stinking vomit. I think we're going to, uh, we're, we're going to let that one slide. I don't think we're that worried about it. Okay. Speech! Speech! Every wedding banquet is host to a frankly interminable number of speeches. Some long, some short, some honest, some deceptive, roiling up and down the hall, punctuating every course of the feast in waves. As my turn nears, I am left wondering, should I consider the happy couple or focus on the festivities? After all, it's easy for double meaning to get lost in for most in the sea of uh, words. So you can say, praise the happy couple, praise the party, or say something sweet but perfunctory. Uh, I'm going to praise the happy couple. That sounds like what we'll do. Our child is now old enough to get the groom to rule, so they get two martial on that one. That is, of course, this a thing that we took last time, just groom to rule, it just gives you some skill points, I guess, when you hit, they hit three looking at that. Anyway. Oh, somebody removed from scheme because uh, they don't want to be in it. Neighboring ruler. Oh, they might have just lost their land. Neighboring ruler lost a war in a raid for captives. Ah, so they were probably imprisoned and then let go, and then that's what's happened there. I understand. We still have a ton of people in. We have 20 agents still, so. Yeah, it should be fine. And another thing. Every feast, there's always one. Every single feast. One long winded, ill born pissant cornering people who just will not be silent. This time it's as low, and she's deeply confusing. Her words clearly uh, make sense to her, but they sound almost unconnected to me. It's been half an hour of trying to figure out what my part in this conversation is. I'm going to scream. So I can gently exit, say, shut up, that's very interesting, or grin and bear it. Well, obviously our best option is to try and extract ourselves via our amazing diplomacy skills, so let's do it. And we got a diplomacy lifestyle perk. Wonderful. Okay, let's close this for a second. Head back in here. Uh, we can get heart of the family. Close family like us and grab befriend so we can befriend people. I could also grab thoughtful which makes gifts better. I'm going to grab heart of the family. That's kind of what we're doing this for and we're aiming for friendly counsel at the end here. So that sounds fine. Okay, cool. Um, more people not in the scheme but they're probably people who got imprisoned. That's fine. Right. Feels like I've been eating, drinking, mingling, dancing, and singing for days. Soon the celebrations will wind down and the spouses will retire to the private chambers for the consummation of the wedding. For those of uh, for us who remain, though, let's pour another drink and let's toast to the spouses. It's time. Okay, 30 days till the end. Dynastic doubts. Tired after a long day's waiting and socializing, my cousin and I ensconce ourselves to a tip table to mull over the union. Melanie speaks quietly. You know, this bond opens the gates for rock point intrigues to destroy the Zu Zalil Atalil and House Haj from within. She, um, she sighs. Give it time. Grant them a moon together before you pass such judgments. Then say, I fear you're too close to the truth, cousin. What of it? Leave it to the bards or is it in the hist's hand now? We seem to be pretty pious. So we'll say it's in the hist's hands now. Drunkard Agent. Uthsera Tulnila is in her cups on a daily basis, even though it has opened up some opportunities to learn more about Darva. She is of little use for anything else, so I can say have a drink, and her drunken escapades can be helpful, or she can expose the scheme. Or she must stay away from all manner of drink. She must stay away from all manner of drink. That's an obvious choice. One after the other, all guests are leaving, and it's time for me to depart too. The wedding was a great occasion to mingle with my peers and relax, and I abandoned the premise uh, tired and satisfied, or the premises tired and satisfied, sending my best wishes to the spouses for a prosperous and happy union. So, they marry, I get prestige, lose stress, and gain legitimacy. Our legitimacy just went up to true, although it hasn't quite actually gone up to true yet. Uh, so that's fine. And then everybody who attends the wedding gets some bonuses. Nice. Wonderful. That all seems pretty good. And now we get to head back. Uh, right. Clear this out. The oldest captive. As I ventured through Utankas, I stumble upon an intriguing sight. This is an Elder King's event, by the way. 
It is it. It is I, an imprisoned soul languishes within a mystical prison, lamenting her condition. Her tale revealed a tragic history of enslavement and captivity at the hands of a powerful mage. To aid Nitizai, I needed to decipher the spell she was trapped in. The spell was very complicated, and according to her, many have attempted to free her, but throughout the centuries, none succeeded. She also tells me that if I'm able to release her, she would share where the mage's treasures are. Well, I'm definitely going to release her because this is definitely part of our um, families freeing from uh, the shackles kind of thing. Also, immortality. Wow. Okay. It's an interesting one. Um, but yeah, how are we going to succeed? So I need to know where the treasures are. Never mind the treasure. We're coming with me. Or maybe on the way back. I think I have to say never mind the treasures. You're coming with me. And we'll get them. Let's see if this works. 42%. He deciphered the spell and she has now joined us, the 792-year-old immortal stupid person. Like, they're 792 and they have four stewardship. What is going on there? Onvoroplasms. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> We've had this event before. Regrettably, my fellow traveler, Machna, was assailed by one of these creatures before she became aware. And presently, the entity is in the process of eroding her. Urgent action on my part becomes imperative. Every other time we've clicked the button. There's no way we couldn't click. I mean, the chances of us dying are so low. I mean, we had this last time. It may even have been Machna that we saved last time. I mean, realistically, right? It's one in four chance that we just do it. We succeed. And then it's another one in four chance that we die. Now, is rolling... Like, if you had a d4, is rolling one twice in a, ro in a row possible? Yes. Is it likely? No. Rajnasa Branjav, the Zuzalil Atalil, has crossed the door to the world of spirits at 27 years of age. She was consumed by a voroplasm. A keen and dedicated hunter, she loved to spend entire weeks in the wilderness looking for the most elusive game. Rajnasa Hatchling ascends to the throne, merely nine years old, she will need to rely on her regent Kima Mota during her first years of rule. <sighs> yup. Yup. I mean, like, what, what are you gonna do? Uh, we died, we lost three titles on succession, but these are now just our vassals, which is fine. We get to keep Izadan and Stormhold. So our new one in Stormhold. And I mean, to be fair to Branja, she did survive an additional uh, 16 years on anyone else. So good job them. And now we're playing as Raj uh, Nasa Hatchling of Zuzalil Atalil. Okay. That is not ideal. That was not really what I was looking for there. But unfortunately, that's where I'm going to have to end the episode. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.